Okay, so I'm calling the meeting to order at one minute after five. And we have John Udis with us and Rick Dwyer and Sandy Levine. And Dorinda's coming in. Who else is on? Okay. Yeah, Dorinda. I consider her a regular. Uh, yeah, frequent flyer. Uh, amendments to the agenda. None for my end. Um, I just like to have a quick uh, conversation and update on the ARPA funds issue. I did get that letter uh, you sent out, but I just like to talk about it for a minute at the end of the meeting. No action will be taken. Peter, uh, it's, it's warned at the bottom of the, it's warned at the current agenda under treasurer's report. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, that takes care of that then. Okay. Yep. And, uh, and just a little brief conversation about the town email. Those are the only things I have. Anybody else have anything? Okay. So with that, uh, Sandy, update by the Planning Commission Chair, Sandy Levine, on Better Places Grant. Thanks. Um, I wanted to provide an update on this grant. The work should wrap up by the end of the month. Um, Unfortunately, I don't, I don't have much uh, of substance to provide with you. This was a grant that the town of Middlesex received for building two overlooks on Camp Mead property by the river and then having a trail that would connect those um, with public access to those trails. Uh, the work that the town needs to do is um, develop an easement or some other agreement with planetary matters folks to um, have public access to guarantee public access to the overlooks and the planetary matters folks are doing the rest of the work themselves. We did request an extension for one month. The work was supposed to be completed by the end of August, but that didn't happen. Um, it will be completed by the end of September and we will be, I'm awaiting a, um, a, a contract amendment from the Department of Health. I had hoped to have that to present to you all. Um, so you would have that, but I don't have it yet, um, but I expect to have that soon. And then the other piece of it that the select board at some point will need to review would be the uh, easement or license agreement or the public access agreement um, that would provide permanent public access to townspeople or members of the public on the trails that would be on Camp Mead property. There's been some back and forth between, I've been working with the town attorney and with Russ Bennett, um, but that is not yet finalized, but hope to get that completed in the next week or so. Apologize, it's not done and ready for this meeting, um, but that's, that's, that's the update and I expect to have it done soon. Okay, thank you, Sandy. Any questions, anyone? Yeah, Sandy, is that the only easement that we, that they need? Yes. Well, they will also, I believe they will also need some permission from Velco, which has the overhead right. power lines. Um, you know, I, I think they'll also need to put in a request with Velco for that. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Um, so Sandy did, so did, did the permission go through from all the, um, owners of the land I thought there was some concern yeah this is just this is you know sort of phase one the first step and this was very specifically only on Camp Mead property okay and the grant would pay for them to build two overlooks which are already designed and then there would be a public access which would you know start at the parking lot by um on camp mead and go to the each of the two overlooks it's only on okay. camp mead property you know hopefully going forward we can build on that and you know maybe this can be a model to obtain some permission from other landowners but this is just the very very beginning of of, of that so uh russ bennett just joined the zoom hi russ uh, do you have anything uh, to add to what you heard Sandy's uh, brief presentation on status? Russ? I heard the end of it, but um, can you hear me? 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I mean, we're just fine tuning, I think, whatever the language is that will guarantee that you have virtual access to the overlooks, that kind of stuff. But, you know, we've been, we've made the footing boxes, you know, we've done all that kind of stuff. Um, so we want to try and get it done by the end of September. Um, uh, and, you know, we're just moving forward anyway, because this is our passion. <laughs> Got it. You know. Got it. So. But there are no, there are no issues in terms of the easement other than just working out the language so that it makes everybody happy. Yes. No, I think we all want the same thing, which is that this is the beginning of something that can grow and that it's not revocable by the planetary matters or future landowners um, from the town. Um, so, you know, we looked at an easement, but easements normally work the opposite which way, which somebody gets an easement so they can then do something on your property. So now we're sort of looking at a license because we're going to do the doing. <laughs> um, yep. And it, it's just the, the attorneys will figure it out. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Anything else on this subject? Okay. Anyone? okay. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Russ. Uh, highway department update. Discussing discontinuance. Yeah, I'm going to. Whoop. Hello. Okay. I thought somebody wanted to be recognized. Hello. Discontinuance uh, of. Colby and Dolan Road action unlikely. Victor. Um, I think the ball's in your court. We'd like to do that. If, uh, well, last time we talked, uh, I think we were going to decide, or the select board was going to decide where they want to move ahead. And the question was uh, if somebody was going to do something on uh, down there on Colby's that uh, we would be. Uh, cutting them off or we'd have to go through the process of giving them access again but i don't think there's any issue on dolan road as far as uh turning that into a trail because it's pretty uh pretty hard to get around yep so is it the entirety of dolan road it's just part of it right yeah it's a little section just beyond uh off off uh off from uh uh, Bulldog Road, it just goes in there, what, there's three houses there, and then it uh, it starts, and then it stops out. I think that's Donna Brown's house out on the end. I, I have a question. I was thinking about it this weekend because I was walking on it, and, and I wonder um, if in the event the town, you know, long past our days here on this earth, but the town decided that it wanted to reopen it, is it hard to turn it back from a trail to a regular road? I thought we were, I thought we were thinking we were downgrading it to class four. No, no it's a class four now class and it would four. become a trail. Oh, right. okay, I'm sorry. Right, you're right, Liz. How, how is that problematic? Because, you know, there's a reason why that road was there to begin with, right? It, it joins two sections in Middlesex. Otherwise, you have to go all the way around. And does that sort of stop us from ever having that opportunity in the future? The answer, I believe the answer to be no. We're still maintaining oh. the town right away. I mean, it'd right. be a process. Mm -hmm. Right. But, but it it's not like it, when we threw up Merritt Road, it's theirs now, and you can't like yeah. they own. No, we're not. Road we're not doing that. We're okay. downgrading it to a trail, so it still maintains the town right away. At least I believe that's what the proposal is. Correct. Right. Yeah. Now the only thing, the only thing we accomplish by making it a trail, I believe, is that we have no obligation to maintain uh, bridges or culverts or do anything. Right. With it, because there's that one area where, in fact, somebody could some to come to us and say, you need to replace the culvert, right? Maybe, possibly. That's correct. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I've, I've been thinking about, uh, I've been thinking about Colby Road, and I guess my thought on Colby Road, which is similar to the way some other people were thinking at the last meeting is, 
let's start the process and see what happens. We can always stop it. Correct. Yeah. P Peter, we, may we, I speak Colby to this? Road, Colby Road, again, is it now class four and we're gonna make it a trail? I didn't- No, it's class four. three. Right, it's class three. So are we downgrading it to class four or to a trail? Depends what you want. No, whatever your pleasure. Well, there are no bridges or culverts, right? John's on. Say okay. that again, Peter. Oh. I'm sorry? This is, oh, just a minute, yeah. Peter, may I speak to this at some point? Yes. Now would be a good time. Um, good. I just wanted to, um, I, when I saw this was on the agenda for the meeting tonight, I just wanted to make um, make clear that the, the, the town plan um, has fairly strong language to, encouraging the, the town to maintain or to keep class four roads as public access to um, provide recreational opportunities for folks in town, that those are important town resources and that we shouldn't be giving up uh, the, those rights of way um, because a lot, of, a lot of people use them as trails. Uh, and I just wanted, I didn't know what exactly the town was considering downgrading to a trail would, would maintain um, public access though there would be some less maintenance of, of that going forward. Really, I think I'm right Sandy when I say the, the maintenance issue is that we're required to maintain culverts and bridges, if any. So really there isn't, there isn't very much, very much difference. And in this case of Colby Road, I don't think there's any difference. No. Okay. no. Is Colby the road that all that land is selling on? Yes. Yes. Okay. It's the road as you come up as you come up Center Road from the interstate. It's the it's it's, it's all growing in now because it hasn't been we haven't we haven't been doing anything to maintain it. Um, but has it sold? The land has oh, sold, yeah. I believe. Correct, Sarah. Oh yes, it's sold. Ask for us. And is there a reason why we suddenly want to downgrade it to something else if they're going to be using it to say build housing or something like that? Well, I that guess I the, don't. That was the discussion at our at our last meeting. That's that's the point I brought up at the last meeting. And other folks said, "Well, you know, let the new owner participate in the process and give us a good reason why we shouldn't throw it up." So. <laughs> As I Who's said, the owner? I is it Russ it Bennett I sitting here? Downgraded. I shouldn't say throw it up. Downgraded. Is is it Russ Bennett sitting right here? Who's the new owner? Yes. Okay. Well, I'm part owner. With uh, another fellow, um, we're putting it in an LLC. Um, so we'd like to see it stay as a class three. We don't know exactly what we want to do, but we know. Um, in broad strokes, some of the things we'd like to do, which is create some housing, including affordable housing and moderate um, housing, you know, that would stay in perpetuity um, because we understand that crisis as well as anyone. Um, and also make trails open, you know, make it be accessible um, through some of the various different paths and, and those kinds of things that are there. Um, and we also, I, I just happen to be, and I think this is uh, something that we can figure out how to fund is um, I'm working on remodeling and building a large daycare center in Waitsfield at where um, Small Dog used to be. And the need is bottomless for uh, really quality good daycare. So that's something we'd like to include in our mix there. Um, and then the other thing that we've sort of broad stroke been thinking about are um, making everything everything be net zero and um, having enough solar worked in around to be able to be completely um, disassociated from all fossil fuels. You're doing exactly um, what I wanted to do if I'd had the money. <laughs> so, so, so I guess um, the question, is, I mean, I don't have the money, but some people do. <laughs> the, other, the other thing I would just bring up is remember that in our throwing up ancient roads process, 
uh, we maintained the other end of that road, which circles up over the hill and goes past Ruth Pope's house. Correct. Do you know where everybody know where that is? So yeah. there, is, there is a trail which connects to uh, which connects to that road. So, and, uh, Peter, I would also say that with regards to Colby Road, that area of town has been identified in both our zoning and our town plan as an area where we want to have more development and to have yeah. mixed use development. Correct. So I don't know why the town would be considering downgrading a road in an in an area where yeah. we're trying to encourage more development. I totally agree. I do not think we should downgrade Colby, given what I've heard about the purchase of it and some aspirations for it. Other thoughts, anyone? Yeah, I, agree. I agree. Okay, so I guess I guess we're saying we're gonna take Colby, Colby off the list and leave it as is for the time being and, and leave you and your partners, Russ, to come up with uh, some good stuff down there for our town. I mean, we want to we yeah, want to support you. Believe me. No, we are we are phenomenally fortunate. I think all, all of us, and that we all see the world similarly, and and we have this moment in time when we can do stuff. I think you know what we would do would also generate some tax revenue, which would make having a pure flat three road still you know. Um, Good, but I think we'll do like we did um, with planetary matters and come in and sort of do some broad stroke ideas about what we're thinking, both the planning commission and the select board. So, yeah. you know, we're, we're not sort of secret Sam kinds of people, you know, um, and then we can figure out how we can go to go together. It's, it's gonna be another opportunity for um, Sandy and I to have a discussion about um, public trails. <laughs> Well, I would just I would just say as a sidebar comment, I've been watching that piece of land ever since I moved to town, which I think was 1974, and uh, I've been looking forward to something good happening there. So, Godspeed as far as I'm concerned. So, you know, I have, yes, I have a comment. Um, you know, Middlesex has a trails committee, as I believe everybody. Uh, knows. And one of the things the Trails Committee has been looking at over the past, I'd say, eight months is really exploring our current right of ways as potential uh, recreation areas, perhaps um, improving some of them, which are maybe not even that walkable, much less bikeable at this point. And I would say that the Trails Committee would really frown on any downgrading because the culverts are one of those areas that you come across on these old uh, former roads, now trails, that are very hard to navigate. So if the town is trying to actually maintain an area where people can recreate without cars flying by, those are very important assets in the town. I just want everybody on the select board to keep that in mind when you have these kinds of discussions. Well said, well said, Michael. I, I would say that, um, and I'm not exactly sure where the dividing line is between, between trail and class three, but it's basically down at the bottom of the hill, I believe where the, where the turnaround is. But I knew that at the time we walked it during the, during the, I think he's talking about road, road identification process, but, road, but I, don't know. I don't know exactly where it is now, but it's mostly trail all the way up over the hill and around. Uh, but anyway, I think we've, I think we've made the decision for the time being that we're taking no action with regard to Colby road, which sounds like what everybody Sarah has a question. Oh, yes, Sarah, I'm sorry. I just think that maybe uh, Michael and Sandy are missing the point about uh, Dolan Road, which was that Shane went out with uh, Ashley Andrews from the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. And she said that that legal trail, that class four section was not being maintained as a class four section. It, it needed to, the town would either have to make a choice, either do the necessary and expensive work to make it truly a class four section or else downgraded to a legal trail. And that's how we got here today. Yeah. Are there, do you know if there are standards for a legal sure. trail in terms of maintenance? I think for a trail? Yeah. yeah. I don't believe there are any standards for a trail. No. Well, then, then that, there are definitely that, standards for a class four. 
Right. So that's exactly the kind of thing that concerns me, that if it's going to go to a trail and then it's left unmaintained, it won't be long before it's really not usable for much okay. other than a line on a map. Wow. So I'm not saying I'm not saying that it has to stay a class three or a class four, whatever road you're talking about, but maybe the standards should be written for a town trail. So that well, there's here's, here's the problem, problem, Michael. If, if the only difference between a, and, and we're getting off subject here, but if the only difference between a trail and a class four is maintaining bridges and culverts, we've already got that standard. Well, there's a lot of trails I've been on in the past four months that I would say are unmaintained for a long period of time. Trails are unmaintained for a long period of time. That's correct. Right. So, so what I'm saying is that's not a really good standard for maintaining those as recreation corridors. Well, some, some well, well, look, this, is, this, is, this is part of a completely different discussion. I yeah. can tell you, having walked Nolan Road and aware of what the situation is there, Sarah is exactly correct. What was brought to our attention is we needed to spend probably, and I'm just throwing a number out there, but hundreds of thousands of dollars to make that road a class four road, bring it up to class four standards. And at this point in time is not the right time for us to be doing that. So she warned us that we needed to take action and that's what prompted this discussion. And that isn't to say that it's someday or sometime in the future, the town couldn't allocate money to, uh, to repair some of those trails and do work on them. Uh, absolutely, but we've got our hands full with the roads that we have right now, I believe. Well, well and isn't that part of the trail committee too, to, you know, uh -huh. have, I mean, the town is not, probably ever going to have the time to be maintaining or mowing trails but if the trail committees you know had that as one of their um, goals is to you know visit each trail and do whatever brush cutting or whatever they need to do to keep it you know walkable well the trouble is the walkable the walkable it may be rough but they're walkable but what they're not is is bikeable you know they're 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 culverts that are out they're bridges that are out etc and there you're talking about that's where the big money comes in Peter. Peter. I, I, I want to extend I, I, don't, I personally don't want to extend this but i will leave you with this that um part of the reason we've been walking out there is to come up with uh sort of a, a current inventory and how we evaluate their condition you know it's not totally arbitrary but it's not a scientific evaluation and then we do want to come to the select board with some ideas about the priorities for perhaps doing some more maintenance and things like that so that's that's Michael, sort of that's all thing. that's all good, fine. That's good work i think that's great i just yep. i just that's you know, we're trying to deal with this one particular situation right now right. well what so happens if we what happens if we don't do anything we don't do anything, we don't do anything, Mary. But I would also tell you, if we decide to go ahead with this, this this is just the start. We know what the, we have experience knowing what this process is. It's not like we're making the decision tonight and ask that, and it's gonna happen. There are a lot of steps we have to go through. So there's plenty of time for people to come back and say, no, 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 you shouldn't be doing this. And I, and I would encourage you, Michael, on your committee, and I know I believe John's on your, on your committee also, to go up and just take a look at this so you know what we're uh, talking about. Maybe you already have, I don't know. Yeah, so, yeah Phil. Um, yeah, I think that uh, as far as Dolan Road is concerned, we should, um, and I don't know if you want a motion or not on this, but I think we should start that process. You're right, it will take a while for us to get through that. And um, I think we should start that process and get those things moving. And there'll be plenty of time for further discussion. And I think what Michael was talking about as far as an inventory and some suggestions about how we move forward is, is a good idea and it's very appropriate. And we can consider those things once they've done their work. But I think we should start this process now. That sounds like the beginning of a motion, Phil. Uh, so, okay, I'll make uh, the motion that we start the process of uh, downgrading. I, it's just one section of Dolan Road, right? Yep. Um, to a uh, to trail status. Is there I'll a second, second for that motion? I'll second that, Peter. Okay, thanks, Steve. Any further discussion? 
All in favor of the motion, please say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. Liz, you? Aye. Abstaining? Okay. No, I said aye. Sorry. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. It was that pregnant pause there. Thank you, Mary. Um, so the motion, the motion has passed, and we will initiate the, the process. Our our meeting for for those who came in a little late. Sarah's daughter is leaving for Poland in the next few days, so she's recording the meeting. But she's tomorrow. Not she's it's leaving tomorrow. Tomorrow. <laughs> That's the next few days, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. He wants to get out of here. Yeah, just leave, Sarah. I'm taking notes. Liz, I got Mary here. I was going to ask. I was going to ask Sarah to mm -hmm. review the process we have to go through so we could all remember. But since she's not here, I can't ask her that question. I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. I'm just saying that it, there, it's a public notification with 15 days of, uh, at least 15 days notice of abutting land landowners and of the portion of the road, along with notifying the public through posting in five places around town and in the uh, paper of record that that the select board will first start off with a site visit to that portion of Dolan Road, followed by a public hearing in town hall. And you take testimony about that, the, about that uh, situation, but you don't have to make a decision that night. And the road needs to be absolutely surveyed, not, not as though you were setting it up, I mean, whatever that term is, but you need, we need laid, out. laid out, thank you. But we need a uh, direct, we need a real measurement of exactly what we're talking about. So right. no sections we know. Right. So that's, that's, the, that's what you gotta do. Okay, thank you. We've got, and, and by the way, you're excused. You've used up all your time. Uh, go. Sarah. Oh, what am I gonna do with Mary? She's stuck here. She's she, the, she knows how to shut the door. No, no, I'll just go. I'll go out and sit in my car with my the iPad. Liz, can you do the BCA hearing meeting at yes. six? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. That's really nice. Uh, some... Give our best to your daughter. Well, wait a minute. I gotta make somebody, I gotta make somebody uh, run the meeting. Does Dorinda Dorinda looks like she's having computer problems. Are you there, Dorinda? I'm I'll do it. Okay, so I gotta make you the sorry guys for this, but thank you very, very much for your understanding. That's very sweet of you. Um how do I make her? And I'll send you the notes. Liz, you know what? How about I make you the person who runs the meeting since, how do I do that? Do you know how you to make you? Make her host go up to the. Go up to the participants thing and then you yep. go to me, I think. Uh, yeah. And then you can say more, I think. And yep, that's where I am. Like okay, let's see. Mute. Uh, that doesn't, uh, sorry guys, thank you for your patience. So tell her the town of Middlesex expects her to solve all the world okay. problems. Why don't you guys continue? Why don't you guys continue? And I'll just uh, go up to my picture. Make host. There you yeah. are. Make yes, change host. Thank you, Liz. You okay, are now. You it says host. it's still recording. I think. Uh, well, you should still yeah. record. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That's very very nice. Yep. Of you. Okay. okay. Are you in control? I am. Have okay. a good evening. Thank you very much. Okay, Sarah. Bye bye. Bye, Sarah. So, Victor, other uh, other highway issues. Oh, uh, can I say something about what just went down there? Because I, I get uh, I wasn't acknowledged about the trails. Yeah, I'm sorry. I said, can I mention something about the trails and uh, the, and yes. just? Well, it's fine and dandy if. Uh, uh, you know, we have the trails committee there, or trails uh, people that do that, but we want to make sure that uh, uh, what we always hear is that not everybody is uh, uh, that wants to use it can use it. It's more used just for uh, special uh, special interest, and uh, we want to make sure that everybody uh, is eligible to use it. Now, use uh, we have that upper uh, between upper Barnett and lower Barnett, and that's a trail. And we don't do anything out there, but uh, I don't see too many bikers out there, but there's a lot of people that uh, that use motorized vehicles out there and enjoy it. And it wouldn't be something I'd want to do, but uh, you know, just because I don't do it doesn't mean uh, that it can't be done. All right. 
So I think we the should- The whole principle, I think, that we have, has been our, has been our practice for years and years and years is to pay special attention to, to trails and class four roads that complete loops or connect otherwise connect roads. Uh, if it's a stretch of road that just goes a couple of hundred yards out into the wilderness and it's not really viable use for anything, that's one thing. But if it connects to another road or another trail or makes a loop or something like that, we wanna try our town practice and policy has been to maintain those rights away and not give them up. Right. 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 Peter? Yeah, John. So just, just in response to what Vic was saying, I think one of the purposes of the trails committee when, when we've done our inventory and as Michael mentioned, we're trying to figure out a form where we can sort of capture uh, what, what these trails are like and what, what is appropriate for it. So in fact, people can make the decision that yeah, this is uh, accessible to someone who has mobility issues or or not really very accessible, so that people will have a you know will have a good understanding. Some of some of the roads that we've walked or trails that we've walked already, uh, I think, would be fairly accessible. Uh, but some of them, um, like up at Barnett, clearly that section, someone um, you know who who's in a wheelchair or uh, crutches, they're going to have a very difficult time getting through. And so people who know that ahead of time can plan accordingly. Um, but uh, certainly our goal is not to make it special interest for anyone to have universal um, uh, availability for anyone who wants to do it. That's why that's the whole purpose um, of what the trails committee has been trying to do for the last whatever, 18 months. And I'm sure it also goes along with whatever's in the town plan. I know that we mentioned yes. recreation in the town plan and what those modes of recreation are. Because you have a DCA meeting at 6 p.m. Can I take it? Uh, so, Vic, the only, the only other thing I have on the, on the highway uh, situation, are, are we back to full? full? No. 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 Oh, Charles Pelcher won't be back until next week. Uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, Shane came in a Friday for a little bit, and then uh, he was in today. They were uh, hauling the sand out of uh, the pit that was stockpiled. Uh, couldn't get it all out uh, because of the COVID. And uh, they're working on that today and tomorrow. So, so why, is, why is Charles out for a whole additional week? COVID-19. And he's still testing positive? Um, I'm not sure on that, but he's, he's living, his whole family got it. So he, I, you know, I think theoretically you get re-exposed, I guess. Well, I mean, my, uh, no, he hasn't. I just, just want to make sure that, that, that this is under the recommendation of a, of a physician. This isn't his opinion of what he should be doing. Uh, I think there's guidelines there anyway from right yes right yeah, but, uh, but aren't the guidelines you're supposed to get retested I don't I'm right. just trying to figure out what the status is that's all if he's if he's doing what he's supposed to be doing that's fine as far as I know he's doing what he's supposed to be doing okay, so, okay. may I jump in this is Jane Dudley, and I have to say I'm actually working right now as a case investigator for COVID. So very quickly, I can tell you that anyone who tests positive is given a 10-day timeline that is defined by dates by the Vermont Department of Health. So it, he is being told, you must stay home and not go anywhere until this point if he's tested positive. And we never, no one should ever have to test negative to prove that they've recovered from COVID. That's, the science doesn't support that. Um, so it's just a matter of doing your time and your symptoms subsiding. On sure. the other hand, sometimes someone who's been exposed to COVID may be given a 14 day window um, because it can incubate in the body that long. So I don't know what position um, the person we're discussing is within that, uh, but I would say that that it has very clearly been explained to that person and everyone else in their family what their timelines are and what's the first possible day they can um, return to work and, and under what conditions. Perfect. So 
Yeah. Thank you, Jane. But Jane, I have a question. This is Liz. If, um, Hi, Liz. if someone, hey, how are you? Um, so let's say I get COVID and I'm within my 10 days and then my husband gets COVID five days in, am I now exposed and that's an extra 14 days possibly? Or can I not get it again? Like, if I you're, guess- if you're both, if you're both sick, you're both on your separate 10 day timelines and you can hang out together during that time. And the first person who's released can still hang out. They won't get re-exposed. Okay, that's my question is the re-exposure within that sort of time frame of a whole family getting sick. Right. Okay. Okay, so just following along that not line, but not talking about individuals, um, Victor and I got involved in a little bit of a situation with the with the members of the road crew who were not sick, and they wanted uh, they wanted to have the garage professionally cleaned and a, and all the equipment professionally cleaned and a number of other activities. I went over and uh, met with them. I went to the store and bought them a a supply of wipes and rubber gloves, which apparently they didn't have, and told them that as far as I was concerned until the meeting tonight, and we had a chance to discuss it, the policy was gonna be when they used a piece of town equipment that it was their responsibility that the wipes should be in the vehicles and, and the equipment, and they should wipe it down before they leave. And the same would apply to the uh, restroom in the town garage. But uh, to the best of my knowledge, we have never had any policy with exactly what they're supposed to be doing. So whether that's the right thing to do or not, I think we need to tell them what they're supposed to be doing because they have no clue, absolutely no clue. So, you know, the school has policies. Sarah, Sarah set up a policy for the town hall, but I don't think we ever did it for the road crew and I think we should. And other than just saying they need to follow the health department guidelines, which apparently they are in terms of coming to work or not, um, what they're supposed to be doing at work to keep themselves safe. I said things like, hey, wash your hands all the time, wipe down the equipment, try and stay six feet apart when you can, uh, all that stuff that I've heard. But I don't know if there are other things we should do. And at the very least, we should formalize that if that's what our policy is gonna be. I think you should have somebody to look into that, Peter. And set up a set up a, a policy because uh, as, as Shane and uh, and I uh, talked to the, and, and no disrespect to Jane Dudley, but uh, talking to the uh, to the uh, health department on what we should have should or should not be doing. Uh, if you talk to one person, that if you talk to ten people, you get ten different answers, and they actually completely contradicted themselves uh, in, uh, when we were talking to them and try to get advice on what to do. So um, I think the bottom line is, yeah, I think the town should set a policy uh, that is safe uh, and to the best of our ability and then use that. And you, won't have, you will not have all these conflicts if, if somebody else comes down with COVID-19. Right. So the, the question, I guess, is how are we going to do that? And I looked, I looked around online trying to find a policy for a construction crew or a road crew, and I couldn't find one. I'm sure there's yeah. one out there somewhere. Yeah, I, I, we couldn't either. We couldn't either. Did you try the? Did you try the Vermont League of Cities and Towns? There's two computers going on, Mary, in your space. Yeah, yeah so we're getting an echo from you, Mary. So please delete one of them. I'm trying to. Okay, well. That better? No. Oh. Yeah. That better? Yep. Yeah. yeah, you muted one. That's okay. That's good. Thank you. So do you, uh, so what do you want to, uh, do you want to, do you want a, an update on what's going on uh, over there? Well, I want to. I just want to finish this discussion because okay. I think it's yeah. important. And I've yeah. I've kind of I've kind of left them uh, left them hanging with my off the cuff uh, 
policy that I presented to them when I met with them, but we need to get back to them and say, yes, you need to be doing that or no, you don't. Or Are they wearing masks, Stick? Yes, they're, they are wearing masks when they are inside, but not when they're outside. Okay, and we're not mandating any kind of vaccines or anything like that. No. We're... no. Um, as far as I know, they're all vaccinated. Okay. You don't know that for sure, though. Well, they say they are. I think I, I find well, it hard to believe they would they would lie to us, but who knows? So, are we asking about if someone gets COVID? What is our procedure? Like, do we hire a cleaning company to clean no, the no, building? No. Do, what are you asking? No, that's the that's the health department issue. What what they're supposed to do? Our our thing is how do we conduct our day-to-day -day operations so that it's unlikely that they do get COVID? And I mean, to me, and others others speak up, but stay six feet apart when you can. If you're inside or in a truck or inside of a piece of equipment with somebody else, wear a mask. When you leave a piece of equipment or a truck, you wipe it down. The same with the restaurant restroom. Um, do we do we close off the uh, the town garage for members of the public. Right now, they have these spooky COVID-19 signs on the door that don't say anything. They just say COVID-19. What doors? The doors to the town garage. What do you mean they say COVID-19? The door, the truck, the... There's, not, there's signs on the door of the town garage that just say COVID-19. They don't say, <laughs> don't enter, do enter, <laughs> run, or, run away as fast as you can. They don't say anything. Getting ready for Halloween, huh? <laughs> well, do we keep the doors open? Like, do we keep the garage doors open at all times? No. Even in the winter? No, we don't. Okay. No, we no. don't. Okay. Because I'm just asking. Many times, many times there's nobody there at the town garage, and all the tools and equipment would be wide open for anybody to run in and grab them. We can't do that. Well, I think it's important that we come up with something that is, you know, because there's a very good chance that all of our people could get sick at the same time. And who would we hire to plow the roads? We don't need ditching right now, but or grading. Those can be put off, but plowing can't. Well, we definitely need to have a policy. I mean, I, my suggestion is that I would follow up or circle back with them or Victor can and say, listen, until we come up with a written policy, here's the policy. And it's basically going to be what I just outlined. Yep. I can't believe the league doesn't have something. Mary, I, I didn't call the league specifically, but I looked on their website. I, I spent about an hour looking around to try and find mm. something. There's gotta there's gotta be something out there, but I but I also don't think it's rocket science. I mean yeah, right. we've all heard we've all heard all the stuff and in terms of the preventive stuff, number one get vaccinated and we believe you're all vaccinated. So that's good. Thank you very much. Number two, wear masks when you're inside or when you're in a vehicle, a piece of equipment with someone else, try and stick six feet apart whenever you can. You know, the, basically the laundry list I just gave you. I mean, right. yeah, Sarah and I can, can, can whip that up in, uh, in a couple of minutes, but we need to do, we need to do something. Are we going to keep, is the garage still open to the public and people just walk in or do we say, for the time being, the garage is uh, only available by appointment only. Yes. Yeah. Right. I think all of the things you've said, Peter, are like you said, they're common sense. And I think that's exactly what this policy should be for right now, unless we get other guidance. Okay, well, here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I'll, I'll uh, once Sarah's daughter gets off to Poland and her heart rate drops back down to normal, um, I'll get together with her. We'll put something together. I'll circulate it to all of you for comment. And then I'm going to give it to Victor who can give it to the road crew or however we're going to, yep. however we're going to do it. But the other thing we should do Vic is let Shane know that he needs to keep up with those supplies. Like if they start going, they, eat, I think I gave them a, a couple of hundred wipes for each, uh, each piece of equipment so they ought to last a few days but they're not going to last forever i was shocked to find they didn't have any of that stuff they they used it all up the day before shane and uh and sally went over there and cleaned everything up uh, um the, i think it was friday okay well we I just need that's to, what we just need to make sure that we keep ordering that stuff they said they had plenty of hand sanitizer but they had yeah. no 
no yeah. wipes and no gloves. Yeah. yeah, Shane was pretty conscientious about it. He went in and uh, and, and 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 cleaned uh, cleaned the uh, vehicles up. Well, that's great, yeah. but. It's only as great as people are about keeping it up as you go day to day, you know. Okay. Yeah, you got it. Okay. okay. Well, I'll do that. And if you're if you're over there or talking to them, if you just let them know that that's coming. But in the meantime, keep doing it. Okay. Okay. So yeah. the only other the only other road crew thing I have, and I know I'm using up a lot of time, but uh, to the best of my knowledge, we have had no applicants for our soon to be open position, which is only uh, only twenty days uh 20 days or even it was 22 when i met with him so now it might be 18 days till uh he retires but that's not 18 straight days because he does not count the days he might take off it's still as far as today i asked shane to get him a, to get us a, a more definite um a more definite uh date but uh he's still saying the end of october but he's going to take some of his uh vacation in between right. so it's 20 20 when he told you that at that time it's 22 days of actually working okay but as i understand it is, it's going to be upon us very quick and, yeah uh, yeah and snow season is coming so i don't believe we have any peter, potential yeah. applicants is that correct? peter can i advertise that on the radio yes we don't say do we that. should advertise it any way we can advertise it yes well i mean i have never seen it advertised and but I don't get the Times Argus either. So, I mean, I don't know. It's not like it's out with with social media and stuff today. People just don't, you know, don't use the old contemporary ways of uh, looking for a job. It is uh, on the uh, uh, on the state website uh, with uh, with uh, unemployment. Is it on Indeed? That's free. Yeah. Is it where? On um, Indeed, the website Indeed. I don't know if road people look at that, but. I'm not sure. But I just thought you could advertise it like on WDV. Yeah. I mean, they'll well, advertise we need to, my, point, my point is we need to be as yeah. proactive as we can be, or we're going to be hiring a contractor to drive one of our plow trucks because we're not going to have anybody. But I, I'm more than willing to do that at 6.30 in the morning or whenever it is, quarter of seven. I don't and, think. Can you can you actually go on there and? Yeah, yeah, you can. They'll let you. Uh, they'll let you talk about jobs. They will. They will until they shut you off. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I say, I say, uh, I say, go for it. And I'm going to touch. I I believe Sarah put it on a bunch of the regular places that we go to, but I'm not sure where it stands. So I will I will follow up with her, but. Right. Um, we're going to be shorthanded pretty, pretty quick here. The good news is, and maybe the only good news is two of our road crew will have had, will have had COVID. So they should be now totally immune and vaccinated, right. but we certainly have the risk of, uh, of somebody else, somebody else getting it. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. that's all I have. I think that's enough. Okay. Who, who besides, um, who else had COVID on our? On no, our no, do not. Do I don't not think we're talking that. about that. We're not saying who it is. HIPAA. No. Oh, got it. Let's move on. Okay. But, uh, so the grader was out. You you asked me about that last week. Yep. We had an issue with the uh, with the roller, and it was a thing with the bearings and the the bolt the nut that holds them in didn't have a cotter pin in it, so it came out. And uh, they they came up. They John Deere finally got up there, and they took they went through of all the wheels and uh, made sure it was working. And they and they came to our shop, and there was no charge. Good. The excavator had a three thousand dollar part. Uh, it was leaking fuel, very very quite a bit. You can smell it all the time you're around. Uh, "Quote unquote," Jay was uh, getting sick from smelling it. So the uh, the uh, they got they took it to uh, Beauregard's and uh, they're fixing it. Should have it back over on uh, uh, Baldock Road tomorrow. So I don't ever and probably I missed it, Vic. But what was the, what was the repair to the turntable? What did that end up being? Uh, 
Uh, how many dollars? Yeah, roughly. Uh, I think I think Dorinda told me it was uh, like eight eight thousand eight not eight between eight and nine thousand dollars. Wow. What was between eight and nine thousand dollars? The repair. The, the turntable turn on the excavator. Yeah. Yeah. So we will have put we will have put eleven thousand dollars into that excavator in the last uh, which which I believe blows our repair budget for the year in case you are interested pretty good doesn't it well yeah so here we go the only, the only other thing i don't know if uh, you guys can think about it we're going to go over and do those culverts um on center road for where the paving project is yep um you guys uh um you know, we have a little more traffic over there. I don't know if we need uh, traffic control or not. It's pretty expensive. Uh, we looked, I looked into that, uh, like we, like the town did when they had that, uh, when they were pushing the stuff underneath the guardrails on center road and they had the stoplights yep. that, that were timed. But the, I think, I think you got those Steve off uh, Johnson rental. Yeah, I believe that's right. Yeah, they're 1600 bucks a week now. <laughs> well, that's a lot that's a lot less than hiring uh guys to stand there or it isn't really it isn't it isn't it's uh if you probably get eight hours so it's 40 bucks an hour for a flagger and then a hundred dollars a day for the signs so you got two flaggers at uh at uh 80 bucks so so there's no I'm 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 answering my own question, but it's just completely unfeasible to block off that road for periods of time. Sending everybody up over McCullough Road would cause a riot. Yeah. Well, you still got to get from the interstate up to McCullough Hill. That's right. Well, yeah, you'd have to go all the way around. Yeah. But Shane, Shane, I mean, if you guys are okay with it, and we would we would also entertain just closing half of the. I mean, they're only going to do them half of the time, and just close it and cone it off. Uh, yeah. You know, say one lane road, it won't cost you much of anything. Yeah, that's what I think. That's what I think. Okay. I think that's I think that's safe enough. What does everybody else think? No, yeah. I agree. Okay, good. We were just we were we were just checking it out. That's all. No, good <laughs> idea. Well, it'll be good to get that done before we start our uh, our paving hoorah in the spring. Mm -hmm. Should okay. start it. Start around the first of October. Yep. What's Shane shooting for? I'm sorry. What's that? I missed that last comment. That's what Shane is shooting, uh, is trying to uh, get to do the October first October one. Yeah. Got it. To start that? Yeah. To start the repaving? No. Oh. The culvert. The culvert. The culvert. To start the culvert. The paving's in the spring. OK. I only got one. I got one more thing, and I know Peter will love this one. Um, we still have we, we still have unhappy people over there, as you know about the pay. That we have two people that have ten years of uh, experience, and they're making less than a guy that's been there three years. I understand that the uh, the temporary uh, offer to be an assistant foreman was given, but. Uh, they're not really doing assistant foreman work anymore. You can't really drop him back to where he was he because. He uh, he can. But I think I think if uh, I think it'd be well worth it. Uh, you know, uh, I think I think those two guys do deserve a raise in pay of a of, of, of like a buck an hour. And if we don't want to do it, they're they're already look. I mean, I mean. Bruce, uh, Bruce isn't looking, but we may be looking for an operator. And I just, I just cannot get wrapped around my head how, why a guy that's been there ten years and does everything uh, would make less than somebody that is. Well, Victor, I know you. I know you. Uh, you were in on it, and. Uh, yeah. And, uh, well, that that's a conversation for another day, I think, because there's a there's a little bit more to it than that. But anyway, I do understand what you're saying about that. Uh, those two do need a raise, and and I do agree with you. 
I think where our impasse was was exactly how we do that. Well, I mean, you mean other than budgeted? It, right. Mm -hmm. um, well, how did you how did you bring bring uh, the assistant uh, foreman up? That wasn't budgeted. It wasn't budgeted, but we were also missing the road foreman, and we weren't listen, paying him. Listen, guys. Yeah. I got right. into this with I got into this with the boys once again the other day. Right. And I I just said to them when I was there, I said, "Look, guys, I know how you feel. I understand, but it's my understanding that at least one of you was offered that position and declined. At which point, at which point they said, "Oh yeah, but we didn't know you were serious." I said, "Well, when somebody well, that's somebody fine, Peter. Says, that's you're fine. interested in this that's position, fine, you Peter, say no. Say that. Excuse me. Let me finish, please. What? When, when, when you and I believe Steve, it was you that had that conversation with them, and they said they weren't it interested. Was. And ever since, and ever since then, they've been whining about it. So, you know, the good news is, in 18 days or 20 days or whatever it is, one of the problems is going away for better, right. for better right. or for worse. Right." We have the other other person to deal with. I just hate to just throw in the towel and say, okay, here, you've been harping about this long enough and whining about it long enough. Now we're going to do it. What I said to him was, listen, budget time is coming up in another month. <laughs> Let's talk about it then. And he said, does that mean I have to wait until next July? I said, I don't know what it means. Oh, it does. But he said, you're not going to go hire a new person for more than you pay me, are you? And I said, I don't think we dare do that. <laughs> but no, I, no, I mean, I'm sick of talking to him about it. I mean, he doesn't care about anything else except except a dollar an hour. I think he's got a pretty damn good job. Didn't look to me like he was working much the day I was there. I can tell you that. But anyway, right. we need we to we we need to face up to this and make a decision. And I think the time to do it, I mean, if, if you think we need to do it on an interim basis, Victor, and do it as part of, maybe we do it as hiring this new person. God only knows what we're going to have to pay this new person. Right. Yeah. If we end up having to pay the new person more, we're really going to catch out. Well, yeah. I just, I just hate to lose your, lose, lose somebody. Well, I, I don't disagree with you, but I, I find it hard to believe that he's, he's going anywhere, but you never know. The other thing that you could consider is like a one-time salary adjustment. And then once that's adjusted, you can move forward the next budget year with a raise. I mean, it still comes from discretionary. It's not like it's budgeted, but that's sort of a way of, you know, rather than sort of giving in and saying, okay, we're just going to randomly give somebody a raise in the middle of the year. Um, is someone trying to get in? What I hate about this, guys, is and you've all heard me say this, is this is probably the third time we've been held up by the road crew in the last five or six years. Mm -hmm. We've had interim raises. We've had bonuses. We've done all kinds of things. And I feel like it's a holdup. I mean, who runs this show, us or them? But yeah. if, if, if we were going to do anything, if we were going to do anything, I would say, once our soon to be retired person leaves, we say, okay, here's a bonus to compensate you for the fact that we got your nose out of joint and you didn't accept the position and then you regretted it later or whatever we say. I wouldn't say that to him, but don't make it a pay adjustment. Make it a, make it a one-time bonus and take it out of our discretionary account. That would be my recommendation if we're going to do something. You mean, I don't understand that, Peter. You mean for the guy that's getting retiring or the both of them no 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 the one who's staying okay right. yeah the gentleman is retiring he he as much as said to me the ship has sailed as far as i'm concerned and i said i would say it has he right. was, he was right. actually quite friendly right right, right. he's yeah. looking forward to going in the woods with his log skitter oh, <laughs> peter i wasn't trying to raise your blood pressure but I know no, I, it's just it's just I I I dread going over and meeting with those guys because he always brings it up every single time. Right. Right. And he has no new information. I say so so have you developed in, information showing people working for other towns are getting paid more? Oh no, he says. Yep. I just believe I'm not getting paid right. enough. 
which what about, what about our assistant clerk? I mean, should he continue to have that increased salary if he's not doing assistant no. clerk? Peter, I don't. I'm just. I have to interject here. Aren't we supposed to have? We're past our yeah, time. Yeah, six o'clock. Yeah, we, we are. are. We are. We are. Let's, we let's are. revisit this. We've got a high. We've got to fill that one position and figure out what we're going to do there. Let's revisit this all at that time. Okay. So quickly, let's uh, let's deal with uh, with with Jane Dudley, since I know she's still here. Jane, sorry to keep you waiting. You're, you're muted, Jane. Uh, hi, no, it's very interesting to listen in. And uh, <laughs> so thank you for letting me lurk. Anytime. Um, I, <laughs> um, the, the agenda says that there might be some action taken and I, I'm, I'm not sure if there really will be action that needs to be taken. Uh, and that may have been a, a misunderstanding. I, I think I said I'm coming without a request for action, that I was just coming to um, just share some info, touch base. Um, I'm the representative of the, for the Wrightsville Beach. Um, and I, I'm not always in your meetings talking about it yet. There are, and there are other people who, uh, you know, have, uh, a hand in the beach and there's overlap with the conservation commission and now we have trails committee and so there's it, it it's the rightsville beach is connected to a lot of things and it's not always my face on it um colin o'neill is a great um dynamic manager so um and i know that he and mitch have had conversations because it, um so i'm just gonna i wanted to uh just come to you and say hi and uh, give you a sort of state of the state with Wrightsville. And uh, it's a pretty exciting thing that is things that are happening. Um, it, Wrightsville has, is, has become an, an incredible resource for an increasing number of people. Um, and not just for the five partner towns that um, you know, offer some support to Wrightsville, including Middlesex, and, but uh, increasingly just numbers of people coming. Uh, the, we, we try to, the, the trail use is increasing. Uh, mountain bikers are using the trails. Frisbee golf has exploded. <laughs> um, and it's, it's very exciting. And uh, along with that, the scope of work uh, has, and, and oversight um, has expanded and diversified. So we're finding there's greater pressure on the roles of our, our manager, who's only a part-time seasonal person. Um, but then throughout the year, he's actually kind of just giving us our you know, time to keep things going. Um, and then even boots on the ground roles, um, there's a lot more work to do to you know, repair a bridge. And, um, and, it, and it's more needed more frequently to maintain trails, uh, not to mention recovering from the floods that we know come periodically with being in, in the flood zone um, created by the dam. But um, and all of it is really good. It's really exciting. Uh, and in, in 2010, we kind of really dug into building trail network. 2017, we started maintaining Shady Rill for the state of Vermont. I know people are curious about what's going on there now, maybe um, some, with the outhouse and such. And, um, and then the, the manager has been putting in more time that's just administrative. So I wanted to let you know, it, you know, there, there comes a time to decide not to expand and keep something sort of capped in you know, the mode it's been in. And we're, there's also incredible opportunities out there. So we're, we, we like to be flexible. And I just wanted to let you know, some of the things, some of the cards we're, we're playing with, um, and there's a, a moment to strike. So we always have kind of a, a feeder uh, file of things that um, we can, we could do that we keep on the, the burner. Um, and so one of them is to build a, a dog beach. There's, there's been a lot of requests for a place where people can come with their dogs and feel welcome. Um, and that's not the boat launch. And uh, there's definitely, um, if you know at the bottom of Culver Hill, uh, 
going north a little bit on Route 12, there's the old roadbed that goes down to right to the brink. There's a, a thought that that would be a great place to have a dog welcome place and maybe, um, you know, poop scoop system going and um, some thought to not contributing to um, polluting the water and uh, and providing some parking there. There's also um, a kind of low hanging fruit um, idea of building a picnic area on the east side of the top of the dam. And it's kind of there. It, you know, it's when you go across the dam, there's some places where people access the water a little bit or hang out and, but to cultivate that and maybe have a few picnic tables or something there. So it becomes a more inviting place to go. And there's a lovely view from there. Um, and so these are just things that we have. Um, we are also for ye several years now waiting for the right moment to build a new picnic shelter. Our picnic shelter rentals are um, quite lucrative and um, also becoming increasingly a resource for events. Now the world is going outdoors and the picnic shelters are really in demand and they do not sit idle and you often cannot get, get a rental when you call now. Um, so we're thinking about another small one and uh, tucked back in the trees. Um, we're also uh, having a need for a more skilled trail crew. And um, we, we find that using youth groups or you know, work days with volunteers only go so far. Uh, so uh, that's just in the hopper there. Um, and people are always asking us for a map. And so the idea is to start to seed a kind of interactive map um, that is available that could be posted on a billboard on a, um, uh, you know, or, or, or folded so someone could have it and also be on the website. Um, and to increase the kind of events that many people don't realize we offer events for um, runners and bikers and um, but there's a lot, and, and we have yoga, and so there are things, room for club building, like around swimming, um, and skills classes for biking, and uh, there's a tremendous demand for um, more rental gear. We need more boats. Uh, we've got not enough boats to rent, and people pay good money to rent boats from us. So uh, what else? I've got a, a running list here. Um, and renting gear, renting bikes um, and bike repair and classes on how to do that. So there, there's, we're, we're just gathering information about the, the inquiries we get and trying to assess where we might be able to meet people, serve people, keep things super affordable and also expand the range of things that, um, to meet the needs that people seem to bring. Um, then there, there are a lot of, uh, and it all is also there's, you know, the infrastructure, there's that we need, you know, more time for our manager and maybe more of a deputized leadership role um, for the property in the summer. And so what do we do to how do we make money to do those things? Uh, wanted to let you know, because you, you know, you know about the per capita that the towns give. But, um, and that's not our first go-to when we need money. We're really, really grateful for it. It's an essential uh, corner post in our funding. Um, but we, uh, we, the shelter rental fees have nosed upward uh, to be more in line with the value of that for the types of um, events that people are having there. Seasons Pass this is, went online when we went to COVID. Why didn't we think of that sooner? It made buying Seasons Passes so much easier. Uh, you know, a family member could buy it, a grandparent, grandparents buy them for their children and grandchildren, family passes. And we have made so much more money on Seasons Passes just because they're easy to buy that way. Um, we're working on, uh, getting raising uh wex annual payment to us um basically to double it it's set at about nine thousand dollars a year or something from 35 years ago or so and um it's never been revisited it was just locked in and it's time for to 
and I think they're receptive, but we're working on that. Um, and maybe even building in a regular annual increase to that instead of you know revisiting it every 30 years. Um, we wanna buy new boats and uh, paddle boards and kayaks and, um, and um, what else? We are, uh, we're interested in getting uh, DEC and Fish and Wildlife to let the Wrightsville Beach people maintain the boat launch. It's, it's a, a wild west over there. And a lot of people are concerned about the cleanliness and um, it's technically not supposed to be a place where people swim and bring their dogs, although, people seem to be able to do that because it's free. They don't have to pay. But if we can get the dog scene out of there and begin to deter swimmers and try to protect it more for boaters. Um, the, and I know some people are talking about what it would take to put a, a, a privy or an outhouse or some kind of facility there, which is um, easier to talk about than maybe plan, but I think that the the beach board and the managers, if we, if we did get the contract to maintain that, we'd certainly want to be engaged in a discussion about whether that's really viable. Um, everything almost up to the road is floodable. So how you maintain any kind of facility needs to be really carefully planned and thought through um, because there are real strict guidelines about what can be in the floodplain so that there's not um, debris or picnic tables or buildings floating in the water and also not toxic waste floating in the water. Um, and so uh, that's one thing our manager of the beach knows like the back of his hand, he knows all those policies. He'd be a great person to be connected to that kind of solution if, there's, if we're gonna move toward one there. Um, so, and we've also been talking about having additional, inviting additional towns to join the district. Uh, and the number of people who come from Barrie is amazing, a huge, huge percentage of people come. So we've been keeping stats on which towns are, that are not part of our participating towns actually have people coming. And uh, we have some ideas about who to maybe offer um, you know, to join. And we may or may not succeed in that, but that would be great. Um, so, uh, and there's also, um, and then of course, at some point there's, you know, revisiting raising per capita, but we, and you, you were, you welcomed us last time that had to happen. Um, and at some point that will happen again, but uh, we're working hard to tap all of our resources to raise money. So along with that, there, um, we're in a time where there is a lot of grant money available for outdoor recreation in recognition of um, just the health and well-being of communities, both economically and uh, mental health, physical health, but also it improves the value of communities to have ready access to um, well-developed recreational, you know, pathways and resources. Uh, you, and I think you know what I'm saying. And um, there's some, some pretty significant grants um, out there now that uh, we realize that the Wrightsville Beach is actually a municipality in its own right um, and uh, can play a pretty interesting role in a grant application that requires collaboration among communities. So there's some grants out there right now. One is the, what we call the VOREC grant. Um, which is the Vermont Outdoor Recreation Economic Consortium Administrative Board. <laughs> and some of these grants are hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, and then there are smaller grants that you know, can help buy bikes or boats or something like that. And we, we're starting to put out little feelers and um, just you know, concept letters about what we might do to see if we begin to rank. And we're starting to begin to envision a partnership with um, Cross Vermont Trail, with Hubbard Park, uh, uh, some entities that seem that sort of run on their own, you know, energy. But if we band together and it develop a vision for our little region, if you will, so that the picture of how Wrightsville fits in um, 
and it becomes uh, more easy to see, then we may be able to get some some grants. And we've got uh, a grant writer who's willing to help us do this. And of course, I'm coming to report out to you, but this is also a dialogue and we're looking for ways, I'm particularly looking for ideas about initiatives that Middlesex would like to see or things that would be useful to Middlesex that maybe would make you thrilled to have us, you know, write into a grant. Um, Jane, for example, me. Jane, yes. excuse me, it's Peter. Yeah. We're, we're really yes. tight on time. I apologize. I know we okay. kept waiting. Well, for, I'm just at uh, the end. I, I'm wrapping I, up. I'm wrapping up. I really appreciate, uh, I really appreciate you giving us this report. I mean, Wrightsville has become an incredible resource to our whole Central Vermont community, and we're very motivated to stay involved and to support you. I would, I would also, you know, remind you, which I know you already know, is, is the, the state is, is improving the uh, picnic area, recreation area, which is across the road from you up along the, up along the river. Um, yes. And certainly, you know, keeping those two areas coordinated, and if you were I don't know if you were on the on the call when we were talking about uh, working on our own trail network uh, in Middlesex. We have a committee that's working on that, and certainly it would be important to connect your trails to whatever the Middlesex Town Trail Network is. So all those things are are good projects to work on. And I guess what I would suggest, and I believe the board would agree, is you know every every couple of months or three or four times a year or whenever you think it's it's appropriate, uh, come and do this again. It's good for us to know what's going on over there. Very important. Thank Can you, I just Peter. ask a quick question, yes. Jane? Yes. You mentioned um, that the boat launch is not managed by Wrightsville Fish and Wildlife that manages it? Yeah, that's right. And so why like did we have someone from Middlesex closing the gate every day? Remember when we, when we had Mitch do that as part of his duties for the recreation? I can't, I, I don't exactly know the answer to that. And it, in part, we have a lot of different conversations with different entities that are Middlesex related. And so there isn't a sense of cohesive communication, which is explaining what my instinct to come and just talk to you. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what happened there. I think there may have been an issue with people going down there at night and camping. Uh, and while there's technically no rule that says someone can't do that, I think that generally there was an interest in having the gate closed and maybe that was a sort of ad hoc oh. um, solution. Okay. I, believe that's, I believe that's correct. There was a real problem down there with people not only camping, but partying down there and making a mess and the, the, the state has done little or nothing to, to supervise or take care of that boat launch for years. And it's, as it's gotten more use, it's gotten worse and worse down there. And, and I, I literally, it's true, they literally use prison labor to, to mow um, and clean it. I realize I'm letting people so in for I, this SBA, I mean, for the um, BCA meeting. Yeah, we need to. I'm sorry, Jane. We, we okay, really need so, to. We really need to cut you off. I apologize. Chris McVeigh says he's in. Yep. Jane, um, that is Michael fine. Dean, Thank you very much for your time. Okay. Jane, Mike Green is one of the people on the trails committee you could be in touch with. And I'm. Uh, I could be in touch with uh, the Fish and Wild Commissioner if you'd like me to. Be. Mary, I only heard the second half of what you were saying. The first part was you were breaking up. Uh, uh, Michael Levine is um, on the trails committee for the town, and I can be in touch with the Commissioner of Fish and Wildlife about a transfer of the obligation to, um, to Wrightsville to maintain the boat launch, if you'd like me to do that. Can I keep you in mind, and then we'll reach out to you, um, if that makes sense? Yes, absolutely, because I know you. You're welcome. Okay, guys, we need to we need to move on and temporarily adjourn our select board meeting and uh, reset. Call... We're gonna recess it. Recess, not adjourn. Recess. I'm sorry. Wait, guys. Uh, the select board meeting and uh, convene the board of civil authority meeting. Hold so, on. Liz, you are on.
Okay. I'm just waiting to see if Chris McVeigh, he sent me, was it Chris McVeigh? Yeah, he sent me, he says he's in the waiting room on Zoom to get in. I just let in John, and who else did I let in? Oh, here's Chris calling me. Hold on. Chris? Yeah, I, I don't see you in our waiting room. I'm wondering if you have a different link. I use, I use the link that Sarah sent by Thursday. Hold that, on, the 24th. That should be the right I one. I give you um, the number if you need it. If he wants to type it in, I can give you the uh, number. Waiting room that I didn't see, but I let them all in, and I don't see anyone in the waiting room right now. But let me just see. Um, yeah, try getting in again. Okay. Does anybody need the number, Sarah? I mean, uh, Liz, the Zoom number? No, I guess not. Hear me okay? Hello? I'm muted. No, we can oh, hear you. We hear it. Okay, sorry. Um, sorry, guys, I've got like three screens going on here and I'm just looking for the agenda. I've got the agenda. Call it to order. Welcome. Yeah, I'm going to call it to order. And what are we doing? I, Welcome I and any amendments. Okay. Uh, who do we have as guests here? We have on our BCA, John, you're on the BCA. Okay. Yes. That's a new guest and who else? Um, that's it? Or someone else in? I guess not. And everyone else was already here. Okay, so the only person I see right now is John. Okay. You did um, have somebody else in with- I did, but, but I don't see them anymore. Them. No, you know what? I was no, um, I, I, I was waiting on. I tried a couple different devices, oh. so I might have been a duplicate there. So apologies for any confusion. Okay. But, yeah. well, we oh, don't thanks. That, that's right. Are there any amendments? No. No. Okay. So uh, we're going to do the buy-in. Do we have a quorum, Liz? I think question. so. We've got John and me. Aren't you guys on it too? Yeah. Well, who else is on it? Who's not here? I'm on it. Dorinda's on it. Yep. Theo and Sarah are not here. Uh -huh. and Chris is trying to get on. Um, hold on, everybody. Let me just send an invite to Chris McVeigh. Because he seems to be on a different one or something. Yeah, we're, we're okay. There's 11 people on there the are? PCA okay. and we have seven. Yeah. All right. Well, let me just quickly uh, send it to him. All right, I don't know. Okay, so um, sorry that I'm so disorganized here with all these screens. Um, so we're looking at the biennial uh, list. Do we have that? Does someone have the, Did we, are we looking at that right now? Does anyone have any changes? Biennial review of the Middlesex checklist. Yeah. So I have. Stuff, but I don't understand what it is. I have two pages that have different highlights on them. Starts with Robin. I don't understand. I don't understand what the highlights are, but they're basically people who haven't voted in the last two elections, and people who, who Sarah believes should be, uh, what's the right word? Questioned, challenged, challenged. Challenge. Challenge. The right word. Yes. Well, I mean, does she? Is this list really her? Her suggestions that we purge every single one on that two-page list? You don't purge them. You have to send them a challenge letter. And okay. then they 
could they respond back whether or not they've moved out of town or they wish to remain on the list? Okay, so then the correct verb challenge. Does she is this two page list? She suggests we challenge every single one on this list. You know, Dorinda. Those are the ones she called out, and she knows that for some that either they haven't voted or that they have um, moved away or something like to that effect. Or died. So usually <laughs> or died, took, right. So usually the process has been, I'm sorry, go ahead, Dorinda. I think she took out the ones that did die. So I, I believe what the process has been is that we look over this list and unless somebody knows some reason we shouldn't be challenging these people, we challenge them. The other thing yeah. is, is to review the other list that she sent and figure out if there was anybody on that list that you thought should be challenged. And that's the entire checklist, that big long thing. That's the entire checklist. Yeah. And I found three. I found a handful as well. Okay. Hey, Chris. Mm -hmm. How you doing? So who are, what are those additional names? Once, the ones I have is Kimberly Crowell, and that's on page 12. And I have Mary Lynn and Craig Stratton that are on page 52. And Those should get the challenge letter? They should get the challenge letter. Okay. Well, actually, you don't have to send Kimberly Crowell one because I know for a fact she registered someplace else. Any relation? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Chris, you said you had a couple to add? I do. Um, and some of them are just maybes. Um, on page um, 25, of, um, I thought Monique Hawk, Hawk had moved to like Winooski. She may be back. I'm not sure that, but it was just a question that I had in mind. Yeah, I think she doesn't live here anymore either. Um, page 38 of 59, this kid named Quinn McVeigh <laughs> um, is, is registered in Massachusetts now. So she should be taken off. Um, um, on page 43, I don't know if Christine Payne is still in Middlesex. It just, it's a, it's a question. I, I just, she's a teacher, I right? No, no, she's. But she's not. Yeah, I think she's. I, I think they were in the process of selling their house up on Wood Road, uh, but I just don't know the answer. But, it, but I don't think she's in Middlesex anymore. Um. Ben, oh, Amy Harris, moved to Portland. Oh right. Age is that. And Ben Skolnick. And Ben Skolnick. Ben's on page 51. Amy Harris is on page um, 24. What about um, the Lucy Wood? Did she, is she on there? Because she's yeah. their family. If she well. is, if she is, I think she'd fall into the same category. Yes, yeah, she would. Did anyone check yeah. to see if she is on that list? I can look now. Do you mean a short list, Lucy Wood? She's not on the list. On any list. I don't know if she read. She's she's probably 19 now or 20. You know what it is? It's Lucille Wood and on page uh, 57 of 59. Okay. Okay. Same address as Ben and, uh, and, and uh, I would say And I would say we don't need to challenge them unless legally we need to challenge them. I know they're in Portland. Yeah, no. Yep, they're all in Portland. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the other, I, I agree with uh, Dorinda about the uh, Strachan's not being in town anymore. How do you spell their uh, last name? S-T-R-A-C-H-A-N, page 52 of 59. Yeah. And I'm not sure about um, Brian Taliaferro. I thought they moved to New Hampshire, no, but then I knew they were back. They're still here. They never left. They never left. They didn't. Okay. And that's that's all I had looking through. 
Not me. I don't know who it is. Is there anyone? Do we want to keep looking at this list? No. Okay. I would say I would I would make a motion that we we challenge the list with uh, with those amendments. Okay. Second. Hold on, I'm taking notes at the same time. Okay. You've got the names, Liz? Yeah. Good, thank you. Okay, uh, any further discussion? No. All right, all those in favor of the folks that were listed um, as challenged, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. And we adjourn our meeting at 6.33 p.m. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Good. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you later. Take care. Okay, so we are reconvening our select board meeting. And um, approving minutes of the August 17th select board meeting. Is there a motion? Move approval. All second. second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay, uh, uh, what are the dates of the minutes? Seven. August 17th. Of the August 17 minutes, okay. And who seconded it, Steve? Mary. I did. Oh. Who seconded and it and it passed. Okay. Oh. okay. I'm abstaining, so I think that's the one I missed. Okay, yes, yes, yeah, that's right. Um, we have no correspondence that I'm aware of. Well, I mean, uh, did we, did we have left, Sarah left this thing that came in September 7th. It's the ARPA Municipal Project Selection. That's, that's going to come up under the treasurer's report, oh. Mary, in a, just a minute. Um, Dorinda, did we get three people to sign the orders? I haven't been down there since I left yeah. the ball there, so who came? I, I did not. the third one. Then we got okay. three. So we yeah. got them. Good. Thank you, everybody. Yep. Thank you. Um, I could have signed it. And we are now, I don't know, I don't know uh, how you ended up being last, Dorinda, but we're, we're honored to be here with you tonight. Okay. Well, before we jump ahead to treasurer, I couldn't, I was having computer problems earlier. I got one other thing that may want to come under anything else that comes before the board. Okay. Um, I, I was down at the town hall uh, the other day when the Washington County Sheriff's Department came in and they um, are having problems enforcing speed limits um, due to our, our um, traffic ordinance, I guess you would call it. And especially the one he was referring to was on um, Shady Rill Road, especially. He's written several tickets and they keep getting thrown out. Um, the last time these were updated was 1999 and reading the ordinance for that road in particular does not even make sense. Um, and I think it has something to do with how the roads were renamed or something. So the judge has been throwing them out. I don't understand and what we're talking about, Dorinda. What do you mean like an ordinance? We have a... Uh, uh, a speed limit of ordinance in town defines it, defines for all of our posted limit roads. Of the roads. Oh, the roads. do you mean yeah. like it says it's 50, but the sign says 35 and then we will be okay with 50? Well, no, part of the problem is one, it says that like on Shady Real Road, it starts out saying um, it's 30 miles an hour from route 12 to one and a half miles in. Then it changes to 40 miles an hour from 
some particular number on Shady Rail Road to the school, then it changes back again until it gets to West Hill Road. Well, Shady Rail Road doesn't even connect to West Hill Road, it connects to Story Road. And so, and he's saying, in addition, the signs are not posted correctly. So, um, so I mentioned this to Sarah earlier, and she said that, yes, that this is something that came up a year or two ago, that it was brought to the board's attention, and that um, it should be looked at, because it's a waste of time if, to have these. So, so someone knows this, like if I were pulled over, I wouldn't know to question it. Who knows about this, that they're questioning it and they're being thrown out by a judge? Because it's going to court, I guess, and the judge is saying, no, nope, that's not legally, you know, war warned or however. Yeah, oh, that's a judge right. over in I mean, traffic help court. Me out, help me out here. Didn't we... Didn't we go through all of this when we redid our signs maybe five or six years ago? We had to have traffic studies before we could lower anything from the, from the statewide. Right. Yeah. But I, thought, I thought at that time we, we updated everything. So it was, I mean, it wasn't 20 years ago that we did that. And well, we, the last, the last one the, in the book is 1999. I don't remember this. We had the Regional Planning Commission working with us on that. And Sarah said, when I mentioned it to Sarah today, she said, you're absolutely right. This has been a problem. Okay. Well, look shame, on, shame on us. We, we should put that uh, on our agenda for our next meeting because uh, that, that's just, I mean, number one, they don't do anything anyway, but if they're writing tickets and they're getting thrown out, that's ridiculous. And uh, if our signs are in the wrong place, I mean, shame on us all the way around, I guess. is what So I'm what's the language? What do we need to do? We need well, to look I think at... We need to update our... Uh, what's what's the right word, Dorinda? Speed ordinance? Highway ordinance? Yeah, I think it's something to that effect. Yep. Dorinda, was it the sheriff himself or one of the uh, patrol, the deputies? He was... He came in on behalf of the head person. Um, and he's the one that had written the last ticket that got thrown out. Well, that wasn't Curtis Wilkin, was it? I mean, who was it? Do I don't remember? know who he is. No well, idea. Sarah will know. Well, the bottom, line is, there. the bottom line is, guys, we need to we need to deal with this and deal with it soon. Right. And I don't know what the, <laughs> you know, I don't know what the process is. If the signs, <laughs> if the ordinance don't, doesn't line up with the signs, that just makes no sense to me. I don't know why we would put the signs where they are. Well, he said, that, he said that what happens is you're supposed to have a sign every so many miles or wherever a road connects into the other main road. So like technically, you know, um, I guess if you're pulling out of, and let's use that road, for example, if you were pulling out a Government Hill Road or Wood Road or something like that, there would have to be a speed limit sign there. Going both ways, and we—I would tell you—in all the years, we've never been in conformance with that. We've right. We've had we've had speed limit signs where it changes from one speed to another, but we have never posted. Right. Signs. I mean, do you remember us ever posting signs at all those side roads, Steve? I don't. No, Me. some of them, some of them are, but not not all of them. Right. Anyway. I think on at least the main roads is where the biggest issue is, like Shady Rail Road, Center Road. I think we should do it every place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got to look at it. We'll Lots we'll of signs. Get it on the okay. agenda. I just wanted to, she told me to go ahead and mention it so we could get it on the agenda and you'd be aware of it. Okay, thank you. Okay. So on to the treasurers. Um, uh, did we come up with a resolution on Lafayette? The last we left it was Shane was going to talk to them. And I don't know if anybody asked, heard anything back. I asked Victor about this the other day and he didn't and he didn't know the answer. So I guess we don't know. 
We did okay. pay the we did pay the bill for the installation, right? It's the bill yes. for the move that we haven't resolved. I will uh, I will follow up and find out what's going on. I was surprised Victor didn't know. Okay. I'll let you know, Dorinda. I mean, okay. I'm sure the answer I'm sure the answer is probably 99% chance nothing's happened, but I'll let you know. Okay, great. And the other part is the ARPA stuff. Um, so the la another the big payment arrived over the weekend. So we're sitting pretty flush with some money here. Um, and I think that's a topic of discussion as to how you guys intend to move forward or not move forward. Sarah did speak to um, a couple of the other towns and Worcester is, they think they're gonna turn their funds over to CV Fiber just because they don't wanna go through the process of trying to figure out what else to do with it. And um, she talked to Callis and Callis is not making a decision. They're not gonna rush into it. Um, they're gonna think about it, but right now their thought process is they're not gonna give all the money to broadband. So that's so the, the other, update on that. The other, thing, the other thing I have is, is I was very interested, and I mentioned this to Dorinda, I was very interested to read in the paper that the town of Berlin at their select board meeting probably two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, uh, they were talking about using their ARPA money to replace that culvert, which as far as I know, is a no-no. No, no. no so. we found it can be done because it ties into their water system. Oh, so they have a public water system. They have a public water system. So oh, I found out it that's could be the, done. That's how the water goes, gets to their, uh, yep, yeah. okay. Well, that answers and, that question. And with that said, they said that, um, I've been talking to a few people and they said, you probably can get pretty creative with how you, um, how you tie this money in with another project to tie it so it becomes one of the eligible items that, you know, if you're really creative, like they are passing it under as part of their water infrastructure. Um, and somebody said that they thought that we might even get away with using it towards town hall renovations or something like that if we really gave this some thought. Um, Hi. The other Hi. thing was that um, there's also talk of other broadband money coming down in the future. And that if we use the money for this, that we wouldn't be eligible maybe to get the broadband money. Phil, do you know anything about that? I, I've never heard that, but, um, and I don't, I don't see why that would be no. true because I don't know of any broadband money that is intended to go to municipalities or counties other than this money, uh, but I don't know. Anyway, I think that, um, Peter and I had a little discussion within the last few days and we, we got a proposed MOU from CV Fiber, uh, which I gave to Rob and he, he had quite a few issues with it um, and redrafted it um, more along the line that seems like forever ago we had discussion and about some of the things that we were concerned about uh, in terms of clawback and, and uh, you know, guarantees and those kinds of things. So he did a redraft. I looked at it, gave it back to him, and he has sent it to CV Fibers attorney. And as of today, has not heard back um, from her, Krista, her name is, um, who I think does some work for WEC, Mary. Is that name for me, Krista? <laughs> Oh, familiar, but the answer is uh, we don't have any attorney on uh, that we've hired to, to do that. Okay. So yeah, maybe I, it was a separate I project. CV Fiber and the fact that WEC and CV Fiber are are coordinating may lead you to that belief. Yeah. Um, anyway, I think 
you know, we probably should make some decision about well, how we want to proceed. Um, and, you know, if we're, if we're not going to go in that direction, you know, stop incurring legal fees and, and time and stuff about this. Um, because I don't know, it just, it seems like we've been at this a long time. Um, I'm, like, and, have all together, Dorinda. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. How much money do we have all together now? At the moment, we have about a hundred and about two hundred and twenty-five thousand, about half. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that's about half, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And with the other half will be in a year. We'll get right. the, the the remaining money. Yeah. Right. Okay. So here's, I mean, somehow. We need to have a creative process to figure about other ways we could potentially use some some of this money. Um, I'm I just I, I still feel the well, way I felt all along, like I'm between the devil and the deep blue sea. Every time I every time I read something or hear something, I did read that letter that uh, that uh, Sarah sent over to us this afternoon. That was about as clear as mud. I thought. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, everybody says maybe, possibly, could be, should be, might be. Uh, you I know, have a question. I don't know. I mean, it would be it would be unbelievable if we could use this to to uh, renovate or use some portion of it to to build a new town hall or something like that. Our our chances in the future of getting getting this kind of money in one chunk or two chunks are probably pretty slim. So. Before we yeah. just throw all this money at broadband, I want to make sure, or as sure as we can be, that we can't use at least some of it in some other way. And I know, Liz, you had some ideas about how to use some of it, potentially. Um, but sooner or later, and, it, and the other issue, I guess, is the more, the more I read this stuff and the more I hear, it's not like we have to make any decision right off. We can, we can right. sit on this money and... And, and sit on it. CV Fiber, as far as I know, is, is, it isn't like they're waiting for us to make this decision before they go ahead. They're doing their poll, uh, their poll survey or whatever they call it right now, and they're marching ahead, and they're still saying that, uh, that Middlesex is the key to Area 1 or whatever they're calling it, and, and, and they're going to do it. So, you know, they're not pressuring us to move ahead with this, as far as I know. No. Peter. Yes. Uh, just to go back to one of the things you were talking about, you know, you've got that letter, but number one on that letter from from the uh, Regional Planning Commission was be patient and methodical. There's no need to rush. Funds must be obligated by 2024 and expended by 2026. Yeah, so it's not exactly. like we have to make any decisions tonight. No. No, no, no. And I think my fear that I've been expressing right along through the summer is that there was going to be a holdup where somebody was going to say move it or lose it or you know who knows what or cb fiber was going to say well we're going to refigure it without you guys if you're not willing to commit i mean none of that seems to be the case no so you know i think we need to we need to i mean i do think we need to having started this project process with the mou try and bring that to some kind of negotiated conclusion just so we can know where we stand we've already invested a significant amount of Rob's time in this. So yeah. I think we need to bring that to a conclusion. But at the same time, we all need to be thinking. And, you know, I am I am a little reluctant to uh, throw this open to some kind of public process. But if we can really understand, which I still do not understand, what the real parameters are in what's eligible and what isn't eligible, um, then maybe we should have some kind of public meeting and say, you know, here are the here are the options that the select board has come up with. What do you guys think about how we spend this money? But maybe we need to, I don't know, maybe we need to hire somebody who can read their way through this and say, here's what's eligible and who isn't. Because if you told me the other day that that Berlin thing was going to be eligible, I said, no, it doesn't meet the guidelines. Well, shame yeah, on me. I, I understand now how they're they're looking at it because of the public water system so they're able to go that route what about you know i think about maintaining our roads and the 
and the water runoff and all the stuff that we're supposed to be concerned about and dealing with, which we think isn't eligible. Well, maybe it is eligible or some of it. I don't know. Well, Peter, maybe we should ask this Grace Vincent um, from uh, the Regional Planning Commission to come in and tell us, like, maybe she knows what other towns are doing and she could give us an update. I mean, well, maybe she maybe she could, Mary, but it, but I would tell you every time I read one of these things, it's a little different story. I don't think anybody, uh, you know, and, and, and exactly what Phil says, people are saying, well, they're going to be flexible. They are going to, you know, be creative. I haven't seen any. Yeah, what, does, what does that mean? I don't know what it means. Rinda. Maybe we should put in a bunch of windmills and a helicopter landing port. That would that yeah. would be good. We could evacuate our community when the big flood comes. I don't know. Dorinda, did you say that the person who was assigned um, to help us navigate was not very helpful? Somebody told me that. Well, that was at the beginning. She was just hired on and she really didn't have her feet wet. I don't know if she's gotten any better. I don't know. Um, but I do know that there's been, um, Sarah said that there's been more talk of people just coming into the office and, you know, talking about, well, you know, is the town getting any money and how much are they getting? And um, so she says that because it's out there more and more now that, you know, there is people wondering what's going on. <coughs> Definitely, definitely, I think we need, and I, I don't know whether it's having a meeting or sending out a newsletter or what it is, but I think we need to let people know that no decision is going to be made until we have some kind of public mm. process. We're not, we're not, you know, and, and tell them how much money we expect to get and we're carefully reviewing the guidelines and any, any suggestions that meet the guidelines should be presented or uh, I don't know what we do, but certainly I have completely flipped in terms of thinking that we need to be moving forward with this. I think we can take our time. I think we can relax. I think we can take a breath and uh, keep moving forward before Liz falls asleep. Yeah. I've been busy <laughs> taking notes. I know. We don't, we don't know from any of the other towns what they're considering doing. I mean, there's some hefty money out there. Yeah. Well, I think I think a lot of the towns, Dorinda, are exact from what I know, and I've, I've made a few phone calls, but I haven't talked to that many people. Many of the towns are in the same position. Some are, some are thinking or leaning towards thinking the way Worcester is, where they just don't want to deal with it, and they think broadband's a good idea. So, you know, the, the, the other question I'd like to know is, and this is just jumping around a little bit, but the question I'd like to know is, I believe we were told, and help me if I'm wrong, Phil, that by having the town contribute money to this broadband, it would mean that residents of our town would get lower rates. They will. Um, they didn't want to change their rate structure, but they would waive connection fees. We would essentially be covering connection fees for anyone. Well, I would like to, to quantify what what that is so we can tell people that because you know there's i mean more than getting broadband it looks like we're going to get the broadband one way or the other so Could be. If, that, if that is in fact the case then what's the benefit of us giving them all this money well if it's waiving connection fees if they connect everybody they're looking to connect how much money is that maybe we say well we'll reimburse you for the connection fees right. whatever they are but we're not just going to give you all the money i don't know we're look at it too yeah, I think at this point, um, I should tell Rob to not put any more time into it. See if we hear back from CV Fiber's attorney and where that stands. And probably the best, and just have Rob put the whole thing in a file, sit on it, and I'll tell Jeremy that there's just not enough information available as far as how we can really legally use the money. There's just not enough guidance right now and that we're uncomfortable making a decision until we have better guidance and we're just going to sit. Well, the only thing, yeah, no, I don't disagree with that, except I would say, you know, we've, we've done what we've done so far with Rob to try and, I mean, if it's a matter of him 
pushing the attorney to respond. I don't want him to go back and forth at our expense in some no. protracted negotiation, but at least no. get back to us and say, here's what I think should be in there. Here's what they think should be in there. We've been yeah. unable to agree. Then at least we know where we stand. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not, you know, she may come back and say, yeah, this is, this is good by my client. And then we can, you know, but we'll just sit on it and wait until we get more clarity. And if not, there's some ideas, but we're not going to negotiate any further until we have a better sense of direction. Yep. Okay. But I think the, I think the issue of being able to explain to our citizens what the benefit is to our town in giving this money. Like if, if we're going to get broadband and we're going to get the same rates as everybody else gets, then that is, what's the benefit? Right, there's not. The there's benefit not is, benefit if the us. benefit is everybody's going to get hooked up, then I think paying the hookup fees might be something that it'd be worthwhile to consider, but we don't know how much money that is. I think I have that somewhere in, in my information, what the proposed hookup fees are. And I, I, I think it runs somewhere like 100 to 200 per household. But if that was, if that was the case, if we, had, if we had 500 households, that's still peanuts compared it's to the $400,000 we're getting. Yep. So I just, I just want to be able to tell people or explain to people why we think this is a good use of the money. And I, believe me, I don't, want to get, I don't want to give the money back and not spend it. That would be a terrible right. mistake. Well, but we've got a long time, but you just raised another I, thought for me that Rather than giving the money necessarily to CV Fiber, but again, because there are there are people who are on Comcast in parts of our service area who will not change off from Comcast or CV Fiber won't even build there. Could we, in fact, subsidize people's cost for internet? as long as their service meets the federal requirement of 100 by, and I can't remember what it is, um, 100 I'm 30 up and 100 down. Right. I, you know, well, that's, I mean, the other thing that we talked about, and we, 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 we're, we're beating a dead horse now, but yeah. the other thing we talked about is there, there are many people in Middlesex, so no matter what the fees are, they can't afford them or they can't afford the equipment or whatever it is so right. to to set up some kind of a program where a you know we're gonna we're gonna pay your fees or pay a pay a I, I like the yeah. idea of i like the idea of everybody pays something but but subsidize the monthly fees maybe buy equipment for people if they meet certain in, income requirements i mean all those things i think would be because they're going to be a bunch of people who say we can't afford it we don't care how good mm-hmm. it is and then we don't have the equipment Right. And then so the is, community fund could give grants to people for it. Yeah, yeah exactly, Liz. Although I think there's supposed to be money available, which is going to be income sensitive to help subsidize the consumer's cost so. for broadband. Well, that's that's all the stuff that we need to know to yeah. make the decision. And the only other comment I'd make is it's always better to have money than not have money. Yeah. As long as nobody's asking us to give it back. Um, can we put that money in an interest-bearing account, Dorinda? I know you told us that once, and I forgot. Um, the so I checked with the bank, and the money market accounts that we have pay no different interest than our sweep account, which that's where it's sitting right now, is in our regular sweep account because I was waiting to see what was going to happen. Um, if I put it into a long-term note, then we might have a problem if we decide to do something. So I don't know. I mean, that's where we have to, I don't know what the shortest note we could Are get. You and have any kind you of certainly get six month CDs and one year CDs. And yeah. Right. But do they pay much more than what we're currently getting? Right. That's they, they, they would pay a couple of points more or maybe a point more. They're not no. going to pay a lot more. But yeah. I mean, at, at some point we should say, okay, if we're not going to spend this money for a year or two, maybe we should do this or that. That's all right. right. Um, can I make a suggestion that maybe what we do is uh, form a subcommittee 
to do the research on this so that we have a small group of people that are dedicated, and it could be people outside of the select board, right? Who are dedicated to helping us, you know, navigate this because this is pretty big and it's a it's like its own little job of trying to figure out um, how we can use this. And maybe it's something in our capital spending plan. There might be someone on that group that wants to take a look at this and make the phone calls, try to get someone that they can talk to, see what other towns are doing, that kind of thing. We can certainly do that, Liz. I, I, my personal take on it is that this is a big enough deal that we need to be doing it. I mean, and divide yeah. up the work or get Yeah, I think we do need to be doing do it. The work. I, just, I just think, uh, I mean, we're not we're not talking about a ten thousand dollar grant here. We're talking about real uh, real blood in the snow. So, I think it's us is, is my feeling, but I don't know how other people feel. No, right. I agree. But I'll see what I can find out from Washington Electric Co-op. I've got a meeting there tomorrow. All right. all but let's let's invite who do we who do we think the person is who's the supposed to be the expert let's invite him to our next uh meeting well th they say if there's any kind of attend meetings at your request to provide information grace vincent was that the person you talked to during the that's regional planning right the person um i talked to and i think during the talk to is at the league right and she like during this time she was brand new and did not know a whole lot. Well, I would say I would say we try out the uh, the regional planning commission. Yeah, they're the people we we pay the real money to. Well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know either of these people, but I but I, I I do think, and and maybe ultimately we do need to set up a committee. But in the short run, I think we need to get all the information we can get, mm -hmm. and we all need to hear whatever these people have to say, rather than trying to interpret these letters and yeah. yeah do you want um do you want me to reach out to central vermont regional planning commission see if we can get her on an agenda I'm the asked, sure too. that'd be great that'd be great liz or i i can have sarah do it well i'm thinking we don't need to rush into it today so when when would we want this person coming whenever they're available whenever they're available i mean there's no what we know now is there's no hurry so Right. The next meeting, the following meeting, it would be great if we could do it before the budget hoodoo starts, which is, was, which is right around the corner. So are we are we all set with that for the time being? You're going to follow up with yeah. Rob, Phil. Uh, yeah. so, so are you going to call that person, Liz? Or Yeah, I'll call them. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll follow uh, up with Rob and I'll follow up with Jeremy. Okay, perfect. So the only other thing I have is is I believe after our next meeting, we are supposed to attend or some subset of us are supposed to attend the fire department uh, meeting. So just keep that in the, their meeting starts at seven o'clock, I believe. So I definitely have that on my schedule, but I'd love some company. Yeah. I'll go. Okay, that'd be great. You know, I, I also wanted to say, you said her name was Grace Vincent, Mary? Yes. So when I reached out to, um, because I've done this already, when I reached out to, um, what's her name, the director of CVRP, Bonnie. Yep. Bonnie just basically gave me a canned answer, you know, which was go to the league. <laughs> so right. let me just says, don't spend let, the money. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was like really unhelpful. Um, yeah. So, but let me just see what she said because. Uh, Try knocking on that door again. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. That was that was quite a while ago, though, Liz. I I don't know. I want to hear from somebody who can give us some real information that we don't already have. Yeah. Right. I yeah. would think some of these big cities that are getting a couple of million dollars, you'd be hearing something in the news of what they're doing with the money. Nope. Yeah, but see, they, 
they have sewer plants. They have waste. You know, Burlington has yeah. got a huge right. water problem. I mean, they have. They have That's where they're spending their money. Yeah. They have all kinds of things they can spend their money on. It's it's little towns like us where you know we don't have any of that stuff. Thank God we don't. But we have roads and they're expensive. So if any of this could be used for our town buildings or our roads, that I would certainly love to hear that. Yeah. Well, maybe storm water drainage or something like that would come into play. Sure. Well, that, I know, Dorinda, all this, all this money yeah. we're spending on ditching and, and rock and riprap and stuff. I mean, if we could throw if we could throw $100,000 at that, that would make a huge difference. Or well, I mean, one of the things I talk about municipal priorities is strengthen village center and business economic resilience. So I don't know what that means, but does right. that give Well, yeah, but... It's probably more for little larger uh, municipalities than ours. Well, it seems well, crazy. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, maybe it's sidewalks in the village. Maybe it's a water system for the village. I mean, I just want to know what the options are before we just say to everybody, the only choice we have is to use it for broadband. Well, yeah. I say let Liz make that connection. And if that doesn't work, there has to be somebody in the state government that has some answers. Or we need to go to Leahy's office. That's exactly what I was going to say. I have a friend who works in Leahy's office. Mm -hmm. I'll that might be the place, you know, they could do some work on it and let us know. And, you know, and again, all they have to do is call in by Zoom and talk to us. Yeah, I'll talk to my friend Diane. Okay. Well, I think, does, does everybody agree that for the time being, there should be us working on this? Yes. yes. Is that okay with you, Liz? That that's yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't mean to step on your toes, but I just think this is a big enough deal that we need to be uh, we need to be doing it. And at the same time, I don't want it to turn into a chaotic nightmare either. That's no fun. The more flexible we make this sound, the more people are going to come up with creative ideas. Mm -hmm. I think a town swimming pool and hockey rink would be a great use of the money. <laughs> I think a board retreat. To be able to figure out how to use the money and, you know, someplace like, what, Tahiti or someplace like that, you know, in the winter would be a That's good a really good constructive idea, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to me. <laughs> I'm not going to ARPA jail. <laughs> hey. I think I could do it. I was sitting on a nice, uh, nice warm beach in Mexico someplace with a fresh lime margarita in my hand. I could probably do some really creative thinking. I think so. Yeah. Okay, guys, I think we've all had enough fun for this evening unless uh, anybody has anything else. No. No. I think we do need to, uh, I mean, like everything else, there are all these things we need to be paying attention to, but uh, the you know, the Welch Park thing. I mean, that, that is a, that is a happening place. I'm telling you. What do you mean? Well, just, there's a lot of stuff going down there and a lot of activity and a lot of opportunity. I think Jane put it very you, well. You we talked about Wrightsville, Wrightsville Beach. Wrightsville, not Welch Park. Welch Park. I was Park. God, heaven forbid yeah. that I say Welch Park. Yeah. That's, <laughs> well, that's, right. why, that's why I would love to get uh, Louis Porter to uh, turn it over to Wrightsville Beach. Well, uh, the only thing I the only thing I would tell you is before you uh, mm. before we ask for that, let's figure out what the cost. That's a mess down there now. Yeah, it you'd is. Almost, you'd almost have to have somebody stationed down there, which is going to be expensive. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, but they said that they would they want to take on management of it. Yeah, yeah, but what what's the what? Are, all I'm saying is, if there's money associated with that, fine. But if they just say they want to take over the management, right. they say great, you do it. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah. And all of a all sudden, right. there's going to be a hundred thousand dollar bill associated with it. That's yeah. all I'm saying, Mary. That I'm sorry, I'm going to have dinner. Okay, okay. the meeting adjourned. I, that boat launch has been a nightmare yeah. forever. Oh. Adjourned at seven eleven.